My name is Jennifer Bates, and I am a Baylor University graduate and currently a seminary student at Bright Divinity School in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm also a future clergy member of the United Methodist Church. Faith and Christianity are my life. I'm here representing myself and opposing SB 1515. I've been in seminary for five years now, learning how faith and public life go together and form the individual, giving them hope, life, and love. I recognize that God has given humanity the right to, to love and to choose who they worship and why they worship them. The state has no right to infringe on faith and to not use my faith and my holy Ten Commandments in a way that promotes an agenda or an ideal. The Ten Commandments are not an American value, but a Christian one, and as such have no place in our public schools. Our teachers work hard to create welcoming and inclusive environments so that all humans, even our smallest ones, can grow in knowledge and values. They do not need the state or anyone else interfering with their individual faith values and what they should know. What good is a sign going to do? Is it going to remind them that they are less important to their teachers because they are not Christian? Is it going to remind them the state does not hold what they believe is important? SB 1515 is making the Ten Commandments into an idol, an image that takes us from the true view of God. Forcing the Ten Commandments as a decoration for classrooms are actually breaking the Ten Commandments, that you shall have no other gods before me, you shall have no graven images, and you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. In supporting the bill, the legislature has replaced the golden calf with the Ten Commandments and have ignored the demands of the God that these Ten Commandments claim to be from the commands to love our neighbor, to care for the sick and the foreigner among us. Instead, these are empty words on a sign, bowing to the God of Christian nationalism. The commandments mean nothing when teachers are forced to put them in the classrooms. It is a farce that will not make our nation Christian, but will make our state a bastion of failed community care. It makes, and that will not only make the students Christian or better, but it sees Christianity as a religion of a failed state, grasping at whatever means it has to control the people the state has. Thank you. Okay. Members, any questions for this witness? Yes, Representative Tallarico has a question. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for being here, Jennifer. And as a fellow seminary student, uh, I found a lot uh, that's very valuable in your testimony. I, I think young people who are entering the church are very concerned about our fellow millennials, fellow Gen Zers, who are leaving religion entirely, right? We know that the nuns, and not the Catholic nuns, but the folks who don't, who have no religion at all, that number is rising um, year after year. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like will be the ramification of this bill here in Texas? Will that exacerbate the problem or help reverse that trend? I think what we'll see is a lot of people who will see religion as no longer something that is about their love of God but a reminder of who has the right to say who they are and what they can do. It will no longer be a, I love this God and I will serve this God in the church and a, I have to serve this God because this is the God of the state. This is the God of my parents. This is the God of my government. And I think it removes our ability to connect with God in a loving way that actually strengthens our relationship and strengthen the church. That's beautifully said and I completely agree. I in some ways worry that the unintended consequence of this bill will be creating more atheists in the next generation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Members, any more questions for this witness? All right. We appreciate you being here.